with an empty mind and an open heart. Let yourself be naked before grace. Let your mind rest in this dark awareness of God, in all of this naked existence. It is not who you are or what you've been that God sees with merciful eyes. But what you want to be. Contemplative prayer when done right, is a respectful love and ripe fruit. It's the cloud of unknowing, the hidden love longing offered by a pure spirit. It takes you into silence. Far from thoughts and words. It makes your prayer very short. In it, you learn how to reject and forget the world. God cannot be known by reason, nor by thought, caught, or sought by understanding. But God can be love and chosen by the true, loving will of your heart. Even the most ignorant person on earth can experience union with God in perfect love by practicing contemplation in the beauty of humility.
do this work until you feel the delight of it. Be very careful how you spend your time. There is nothing more precious. In the twinkling of an eye, heaven may be won or lost. This work of contemplation is far from fantasy, false imagining or strange opinion. For these are produced not by the stirring of love, but by a proud, ingenious and fanciful intellect. Such a proud, ingenious intellect must always be overcome if the work of contemplation is to be truly undertaken in purity of spirit. The universes which are amenable to the intellect can never satisfy the instincts of the heart. By love, God can be embraced and held, but not by thinking. No matter how sacred, no thought can ever promise to help you in the work of contemplative prayer. Because only love, not knowledge, can help us reach God. Sometimes God may send out a ray of divine light, piercing this cloud of unknowing between you and the divine. 
and letting you see some of the ineffable mysteries. You'll feel on fire with this love. I can't describe this experience. It's beyond words. My foolish human tongue can't describe God's grace. Even if I dared, I would refuse. And that's that. So lift up your heart to God with a gentle stirring of love. first time you practice contemplation, you'll only experience a darkness like a cloud of unknowing. You won't know what this is. You'll only know that in your will you feel a simple reaching out to the divine. When I say darkness, I mean the absence of knowing. Whatever you don't know and whatever you've forgotten are dark to you because you don't see them with your spiritual eyes. For the same reason, by cloud, I don't mean a cloud in the sky, but a cloud of unknowing between you and God. You must also know that this darkness and this cloud will always be between you and God, whatever you do. We cannot penetrate this cloud of unknowing with any thoughts or through the intellect. But we can penetrate these clouds through love.
we may shoot humble impulses of love through the cloud and thereby access God, not with our thoughts, but with our love. This is an echo of Gregory the Great's well-known phrase, love itself is a kind of knowing. So, be sure you make your home in this darkness and in this cloud of unknowing. Stay there as long as you can, crying out to God over and over again with pure love. It's the closest you can get to God here on earth by waiting in this darkness and in this cloud. Work at this diligently and God's mercy will lead you there. If you are to experience God, or to see God at all, insofar as it is possible here, it must always be in this cloud. So I encourage you, bow eagerly to love.
follow its humble stirrings in your heart. Let it guide you in this life and it will bring you safely to eternal bliss in the next. Love is the essence of all goodness. Without it, no kind work has ever begun or finished. Simply put, love is goodwill in harmony with God. Simply sit relaxed and quiet. Center all your attention and desire on God. And let this be the sole concern of your mind and heart. If you want to gather this focus into one word, making it easier to grasp, select a little word of one syllable, not two.
the shorter the word, the more it helps the work of the spirit. God, or love, works well. Pick one of these or any other word you like, as long as it is one syllable. Fasten to your heart. Fix your mind on it permanently, so nothing can dislodge it. Don't analyse words at length, because studying them isn't the same as doing the work of contemplative prayer. Only grace gives this gift. Be as simple in your loving contemplation of God's being as you are in the naked contemplation of your own self. Don't analyse God's being or yours. Let go of thinking and worship the divine with all that you are, as you are, embracing it fully for its own sake only, nothing more, because the happy essence both of God and of you is God.
if you want to make this cloud an integral part of your life so you can live and work there you must do one more thing complete the cloud of unknowing with the cloud of forgetting To the cloud of unknowing above you and between you and God, add the cloud of forgetting beneath you, between you and creation. If the cloud of unknowing makes you feel alienated from God, that's only because you've not yet put a cloud of forgetting between you and everything in creation. When I say everything in creation, I mean not only the creatures themselves, but also everything they do and are, as well as the circumstances in which they find themselves. There are no exceptions. You must forget everything. Hide all created things, material and spiritual, good and bad, under the cloud of forgetting. As long as you're thinking about anything, it's an obstacle between you and God. And the more you have in your mind that is not God, the further away you are.
So let go of every clever, persuasive thought. Put it down and cover it with a thick cloud of forgetting. The mind is always distorted in some way, warping our work, and at its worst, our intellect can lead us to great error. When distracting thoughts press down on you, when they stand between you and God and stubbornly demand your attention, pretend you don't even notice them. Try looking over their shoulders as if you're searching for something else. And you are. That something else is God. Hidden in a cloud of unknowing. Doing this, the work of contemplation will start getting easier for you. When tried and understood, this spiritual technique is nothing but an intense longing for God. the desire to feel and see the divine as we can here. This longing is true love and love always deserves the peace it wins. If you can sit and do nothing, then you can do virtually anything.
there's another trick you can try. When exhausted from fighting your thoughts, when you're unable to put them down, fall down before them and cower like a captive or a coward overcome in battle. Give up. Accept that it's foolish for you to fight them any longer. Do this and you'll find that in the hands of your enemies, you are surrendering to God. Let yourself feel defeated. Accept your failure and always keep this plan in mind because when you try it, you'll discover that you melt like water. During contemplative prayer, steer clear of withdrawing into yourself. Also, you should not be outside, above, behind, or on one side or the other of yourself. Where then, you ask, will I be? If I take your advice, I'll end up nowhere. You're right. Well said. That's exactly where I want you. Because nowhere physically is everywhere spiritually. Make sure that your contemplative work is fully detached from the physical.
obviously during contemplative prayer, your body's five senses and your soul's powers will think that you are doing nothing because they find nothing to feed on. But don't let that stop you. Keep on working at this nothing. As long as you're doing it for God's love. Persevere in contemplation with a renewed longing in your will to have God. Remembering that your intellect cannot possess God. For I would rather be nowhere physically, wrestling with this obscure nothing than be a powerful, rich Lord, able to go wherever I want, whenever I want, always amusing myself with every something that I own. So abandon the worlds everywhere and something in exchange for this infinitely more valuable nowhere and nothing. Don't be bothered that your intellect is unable to comprehend it. I love it even more for its inscrutability. Its infinite worth makes it incomprehensible. Also, remember that you can more easily feel this nothing than see it. It can be experienced but not grasped. That's why it seems completely hidden and totally dark to those who've only been looking at it for a very short time.
let me clarify this concept of dark here. When a person experiences this nothing, the soul is blinded by an abundance of spiritual light and not by actual darkness or by an absence of physical light. So who labels this nothing? That would be the outer self. Our inner self calls it all. Because experiencing this nothing gives us an intuitive sense of all creation, both physical and spiritual, without paying special attention to any one thing. So work diligently in this nothing, which is nowhere. Put aside your exterior ways of knowing, such as your five senses and their objects of interest. Because I'm telling you that this contemplative work can't be accomplished by them. God has none of these dimensions. In fact, nothing spiritual has these characteristics. So stop trying to work with your body senses in any way. Abandon them entirely. Those people who start the inner work of contemplation with the belief that they're supposed to hear, smell, see, taste or touch spiritual things, inside or outside, are truly misled. They work against nature, taking the wrong approach. Although God has ordained that our body senses should teach us about all external and physical things, I mean that in no way do the senses, various positive activities, help us understand spiritual things. Whenever we hear or read about something that our body's superficial senses cannot describe to us in any way, we can be sure that this thing is spiritual and not physical.
We have the same experience in contemplative work when we use our spiritual sense in our struggle to know God. It doesn't matter how much profound wisdom we possess about created spiritual beings. Our understanding cannot help us gain knowledge about any uncreated spiritual being who is God alone. But the failure of understanding can help us. When we reach the end of what we know, that's where we find God. That's why Saint Dionysus said that the best, most divine knowledge of God is that which is known by not knowing. When your soul is engaged in contemplation, it doesn't worry or feel doubt. It's totally at peace because it knows exactly what it's supposed to do. Also, when practicing this prayer, your soul is purified and transformed. You become discerning. And you no longer want to wander from the path as much. Go forth and gently conquer then. Be humble and passionate in this work. Persevere. Contemplation begins on earth, but continues in eternity. Love never ends.